So, how full is your bucket? What is the death zone and why are we as a culture in it? What are smoking teeth and did you know that you have them? And what exactly are heavy metals? And why do we have four generations of them in our bodies at birth? Hi, my name is Tracy Phillips and I am the founder of Wellness of Chatham, a bi-monthly meeting group created to connect the public with local wellness practitioners and health information and those in the wellness field with one another. Please join and like our Facebook page, Wellness of Chatham. The more we grow, the more influence and help we can provide to our local community. Today I'm introducing a friend and colleague in the field of holistic health, Dr. Christian Warness. Dr. Warness is a board certified chiropractor who has been in practice for over 15 years. He has worked hand in hand with medical doctors to develop and refine the best and most integrative approach to the needs of those he serves. Here in the Triangle area, Dr. Werness and his colleague, Dr. Pooja Wentworth, help clients by educating and treating them through a systematic approach to total health and wellness care. For more information, please visit www.chapelhillhealthsolutions.com. So what do you need to know today to save your health and your life? Well, you know what they say, you don't know what you don't know. But with the following excerpt from a bi-monthly Wellness of Chatham talk by Dr. Werness, you will find out things that you need to know to change the choices you make that impact your health and ultimately your life. What we're talking about tonight, heavy metal toxicity, is um, it's an epidemic. It's an epidemic. And I know typically when we go to a talk or we're hearing somebody on TV, they're all saying, it's an epidemic, this is the one, this is what you have to do. My goal tonight, our goal really, is to impart information for you guys to get a glimpse at what is actually going on here. And I'm excited because you guys have so much knowledge to start with that I think this is going to be really exciting. One of the focal points of getting well is looking at the food that we eat. So one of the things that we talk about with our health participants is what are you actually putting in your body? If we look at the standard American diet, which I'm sure none of us participate in, sad. it is sad. It's a sad <laughs> diet. Um, what we are doing is there's such an overload of sugar that we're essentially creating a chronic inflammatory process in our body of which we've never really seen it this bad before to the point where health participants maybe 20 years ago who were in their 50s and coming down with arthritis and maybe some heart disease and, and things that we would expect, okay, well, this person's over 30 and maybe that might be expected. We're seeing it now in their 30s. Um, so the, when you sit back and you think about what is going on here, is it our environment? Is it our nutrition? Is it our genes? I mean, what's actually happening here? And we think that there are multiple factors at play. One of the biggest ones is our diet. I talk to um, triathletes, guys who are professional athletes as far as their body is concerned, and they get paid to perform and, and all of that. And I'm really surprised when we'll have a conversation, we'll talk about carbohydrates. And they'll say, well, I gotta have carbohydrates. And we'll talk about how a carbohydrate becomes a sugar within four seconds of hitting your tongue. And if we're actually dealing with a cellular inflammatory condition, it's the same thing as having a chocolate bar. I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, we're talking about what this gets converted to, right? And this may not be a lot of fun to hear, but grains, if memory serves, are the most allergic food that we consume with the presence of gluten and what are also considered anti-nutrients. In the history of the human, grains have really not had a major focus for a long period of time. I think it's like 500 years that we've actually been consuming grains. But in our history, that's not a whole lot of time. But what we're finding out is when we remove grains from a sick person's diet, we start to see some incredible changes. And I know, you know, trust me, 
I hear it all the time. We have health participants. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I won't do it. <laughs> you know, I won't do it. Uh, and so, you know, the reality of it is that in a very loving way, and one of the other reasons I'm excited about tonight is because you guys are all leaders. I mean, you are leading the revolution to change this healthcare system. You know, and you have to look this person in the eye. You have to love them. You really do. You, you have to say that, you know, you're either going to do it or you're going to do it. it. It's either going to be, we got to do it now while we're preventative and we're not symptomatic and we're not in the death zone, or we are going to be forced to live life in a way that we never wanted to and never thought we needed to. How in the world does a chiropractor get involved in heavy metal toxicity? How, what is the connection? I mean, come on. How is that a connection? Well, interestingly enough, we were actually trained that the body heals itself. And even though I haven't spoke a lot about how the body heals itself, that's what a chiropractor's premise is, is that this body can do what it's meant to do if you give it the opportunity to do that. Two quick things about chiropractic. Hippocrates, who was he? Anybody? Not Dr. Pujan. Philosopher, who else was he? He was the father of medicine. He was the father of medicine. You know what he said? He said, look well to the spine for the cause and cure of disease. Thomas Edison, who knows him? Knew of him. <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> so electricity, the light bulb went on. Um, Thomas Edison said the doctor of the future will be concerned with the human frame. And really his understanding was about electricity, which we still can't tell you exactly how this process works, but we can tell you it's related to electricity, alignments, keeping that alignment correct, and that's really what chiropractors do. What we found is your alignment is intimately related to how your body functions. For example, the NMDA, um, these, yes, we have receptors in our body. Stay, hang with me here. And they're very uh, large groups of them under our skull. Okay? And a lot of our patients will have a trauma, like a whiplash, or they fall down the stairs or whatever, and they have altered posture. Okay? So we talk about how important posture is, and we can fix posture. And one of the ways that we do that is through traction and adjustments. We've always felt posture was very important. Patients, not so much, but I think they're starting to get the idea. Well, now, physical medicine, which includes chiropractic, is really helping these patients who have these neuro-related issues. So a heavy metal toxicity is closely related to neurological dysfunction. And we'll talk about that. And when we've got a neurological dysfunction, when we offer a physical option to that by stimulating the nervous system, the body can reboot itself. Mercury is the second most toxic substance on planet Earth with an affinity for our brains and organs. What are our brains mostly made of? Water. Fat, okay. So with fat, your brain actually is a magnet for heavy metals. Today, dental amalgams. Does anybody have silver fillings in their mouth? Okay, so that was the leading, that was the, that was the prevailing thought about you know, how we're going to cap teeth. Okay. My dad's an MD, all right? I'm not, um, I grew up in a medical model. There, if I break my leg, you know what, take me to the hospital, give me the drugs, the whole thing, all right? So let me just say that. Um, we have been sold a bill of goods, okay? We've been sold a bill of goods by the food industry, by the pharmaceutical industry, by the healthcare system, okay? Now, when we're done, if you want to talk with me about that, debate with me about that, I'd be more than happy to, but that, at the end of the day, you're going to get mad Okay, and I hope you don't get mad at me. But you need to understand that this all was about money from the very beginning. It wasn't about what's best and why can't we and, and all of that. Um, if, a, if a P 
piece of mercury, if a, if a thermometer is broken at school, warden off the halls, all right, nobody get near. This is a biohazard, right? That's what happens. But we're putting it in our mouth? Seriously? That is, that's a, that's a neurotoxin. Mercury is the second most dangerous chemical in the world for the human body. Um, children, vaccinations in your mother. Um, I don't, we, I will speak for myself and say that I'm not saying that vaccinations cause autism or whatever else down the road. Okay, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is when you take a young body and you expose them to any level of mercury, that it may be enough to tip their bucket. And we haven't talked about the bucket and what it means, but the, we all have buckets. And once that bucket starts to overflow, we become symptomatic. And one of the main ways we become symptomatic is our inability to pull things out of our body that are killing us, which are neurotoxins. And that's what heavy metals do. They get in our system and they don't come out. So, um, you know, so when people ask me, or I mean, are you going to vaccinate your kid? No, I'm not going to vaccinate, vaccinate my kid. At the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. Um, but, you know, if we're, if we're talking about mercury being the second most dangerous, I mean, no. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. If a person was chewing gum or drinking hot liquid, the level of mercury would result in 10 to 100 times higher than 11.6 micrograms exposure. At just 10 times, it would make it 116 micrograms daily exposure. That's... <sighs> This is shocking considering that a government risk assessment study was done and determined minimal risk level for chronic and acute exposure to mercury vapor is 0.4 micrograms per day. In fact, most people of several fillings have daily exposure far exceeding the US EPA, and we know what they're up to. Uh, Health Canada, TDE, in the um, mercury health guidelines. So let's take a guy who's got six fillings, all right, and he's working out, feeling good, doing his thing. And really, I have this conversation. I see a lot of uh, triathletes, and one in particular who happens to be a good friend of mine is like, I, no, it's not. It's not the amalgam. I'm fine, right? The patient says, I'm fine. It can't be the amalgam, because if it was, and I got six fillings, and I'd be symptomatic. So my question is, why is this patient asymptomatic, okay, and we have a two-year-old who just had one round of vaccines, now autistic. Well, what's, what's the difference here? Without Dr. Pooja jumping in. Okay, that's a good answer. I think I like that answer. Anybody else? Is it eventually they get all fillings at the same time? Timing may have something to do with it. Now remember, I want you guys to keep in mind, when we go back, we go back a couple of slides, you remember how, how out of control high these levels were by this guy sipping a, a hot tea? How many multiples of 10 to 100 it was higher than, I mean, it's way high. Any other thoughts on why the two-year-old tipped the bucket? Size of the body. Does size have something to do with it? Absolutely. Not a full yes. immune system. Not a full immune system, another great answer. There you go, there you go. Okay, that's the bucket. That's what we're talking about. So we all have buckets. And we talked a little bit about this before. Some of us have big buckets, okay? And those, those buckets are big because of, and it, it has really um, everything to do with the following. With your genetics, with your body's immunity, certainly with your nutrition, um, there, there are all kinds of things that go into making that bucket big or small. So the answers that you gave really made a lot of sense for this two-year-old who's now autistic and he had one mercury-laced, minimal, tiny little bit of mercury, and this guy's got six amalgam fillings and not symptomatic. My, my thought here is that um, we, we've got a discussion going on because a person says, but I'm not symptomatic. I'm not symptomatic. So um, it's really deceiving. 
And that becomes the problem is that for many of us, and statistically now, we're talking about 84% in this country will develop cancer or heart disease. 84%. So you go to the doctor, no symptoms, no symptoms, no symptoms. Then you go, hey, you got cancer. Well, how in the world did that happen? You know? That's a huge number. So it's, we're talking about how these toxins actually play this role. And my contention is I don't want to have, I don't want to have a bucket at all. You know, I want to be healthy. I want to be clean. I want to get this stuff out of my system because I do want to live 100 years and I want to live vital life in formaldehyde. I'm treating a, um, a funeral director and um, she's been doing this for 30 years. She came to me, her hip pain was so bad. She came to me on a whim. She said, you know what? Somebody said, you got to go see this chiropractor. <laughs> so she, <laughs> she came to me on a whim. I said, all right, give me two weeks. But you got to do everything I tell you in these two weeks. What did I do? Got her off sugars, got her off carbs, put her on the anti-aging kit. It's one of these kits that has all the things that we need to do to start regenerating our cells. P.S. She's not having surgery. It's been four months later. Very toxic woman, by the way. And she's like, what am I going to do? You know, I'm, I can't quit my job. I mean, this is who, who I've been. And I said, what we're going to do is we're going to build your body up. We're going to build that immunity up, and there are ways to do it, and we know how to do it. 